Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video we're going to explore an interesting messaging library called Wolverine. You may have already heard about it, but I've never talked about it on my channel, and we're going to explore it in this video. I wanted to talk about Wolverine for several reasons. First, because it's a very interesting and powerful messaging library. It's part of the broader Critter stack. We have another popular library called Martin, which I did talk about in a video a few years ago. It allows you to treat Postgres as a document database, and it also gives you support for event sourcing. But let's go back to Wolverine. It became significantly more popular with mass transit going commercial as people were exploring other options. And I have to say that that I haven't used Wolverine. So you're basically going to see my raw take as a beginner with this library. And I think this perspective might be interesting to some of you. Let me walk you through what I plan to build with Wolverine. I'm basically going to step through their getting started example with just my own messages and handlers. And it's going to be a demo of using Wolverine as a command bus. And right now, all of this is going to work in memory. What I already prepare behind the scenes is is a simple Aspire application with a web API, a Postgres database, and I configured EF Core and set up my database migrations. So what we need to do to get started with Wolverine is install the NuGet package. I'm going to look for Wolverine and I'm going to install the latest version of Wolverine FX. So let's install that. And then how you add it to your application is you go back to your program file and you can say builder and then host. And now you have a new extension method called use Wolverine. So this is all that's required for the basic setup. Of course, you can customize this as Wolverine supports quite a bit of rich functionality, among them support for many popular message transports, including RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, and SQS. Now, I'm going to talk about those in a future video. For now, let's keep the Wolverine setup as simple as this. So then the next thing we need is a command and a respective handler. So this is going to be very similar to something that you're probably used to from Mediator. And I'm going to create a folder called Features. And inside of it, I'll define a new folder for my new feature, and let's say I just call this the register feature for lack of a better name. Now, let me add a new class inside. And this is going to be my first message. So in this case, I am defining a command and I'm going to call this register user. So let's make it a record. And then I'm going to define a couple of properties that I'm going to need for my new user. And it's just going to be an email, a first name and a last name. So keeping it simple. And this represents our message contract. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using this in memory or with a message transport. This is all it takes to define a message. You don't need any specific interface. You'll see that most things with Wolverine work by convention. Now, some people may treat this as a dose of too much magic going on. I'm certainly one of those. I prefer a bit more strict approach with more rules and abstractions, but I'm open to exploring something different. So let's continue using the default approach. And how we define a handler is we just name a class with the name of our message and then extend that with handler. Now you can use dependency injection in this class and even use primary constructors for this. So let me inject an application database context and this is going to work. And then to define my actual handler logic, I just need to create a method called handle. The first argument needs to be the message type. So this is going to be register user and let's call this the command. And I'm going to accept this completion from Visual Studio creating a new user and setting the respective properties. And additionally, I'm going to define the created ad field and let's just set this to date time UTC now. Since the identifier is a GUID, I'm going to say GUID new GUID and create that. And this gives us our first entity. So you can see I don't need to have any abstractions here. Although there is a way to achieve this, you can implement an interface that exposes a handle method or you can decorate your type with an attribute. Now let's continue using the conventional approach and we have our handler and a message. And now all we need to do is expose an API endpoint that we can call. So I'll say app map post. I'll use minimal APIs. Let's say the route is just users. And the request argument is going to be the register user command. I'll call it a command. And then here's how you interact with Wolverine. There's an interface called iMessageBus. And this allows you to call the respective methods that are available. One of those is invoke async. 
where we can just pass our command. And this is going to hand off the execution to the Wolverine pipeline. It's going to find and execute our handler. And then we're going to return the response from our API endpoint. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to start this application. You'll see the Aspire dashboard and my application getting started. And I'm going to open up the scalar UI that contains my endpoint. Here's the one endpoint that I have. I'm going to go ahead and test it out. And let's give this a dummy email. Let's say test at test.com. And the first name and last name are going to have the same values. And I'm going to send this request. And you can see that we had a breakpoint in our minimal API endpoint. And if I hit continue, this will be handed off to Wolverine. It's going to invoke my register user handler. Notice that the database context is properly injected from dependency injection. I can go ahead and create my user and persist this to my Postgres database. And if I hit continue, I'll get a 200 OK response back in scalar. If we take a look at the distributed traces, you can see we have two spans in this trace, our API call and our SQL query to insert the user. So you can see it takes a very minimal amount of code to create a functional messaging application. So what can we do next from here? Well, Wolverine has this concept of cascading messages. So let me go ahead and add a new class. So let's say after we've created a user, we also want to publish an event. This event is going to be called user registered. Let's also make it a record. And I'm just going to give it the user ID as the only argument. Now, how you would typically publish this with some other libraries is let's say Mediator has this notification approach. You would need access to the iMediator or iPublisher instances and then manually call the publish method. With Wolverine, what you can do is return an object or a message from this handle method. And in this case, this will be user registered with the respective value. Now I do have to update the signature here to also return the same type. And now this will be treated as a cascading message and Wolverine is going to publish it after this one completes. Now for this message, I can also create a respective handler. And the convention is the same as before. You use the message name. So let's say user registered and we append handler. What's interesting is that this class can even be static. It doesn't have to be a typical class. And inside of it, I can define a static handle method. So let's say public static async task handle. We have to accept our message. So let's say event. And then I'm going to say await task delay. And for example, delay for a second to simulate some message processing. So let's place a breakpoint here and let's run the application again. And from the scalar UI, I will go ahead and send my test request. We again had our breakpoint inside of our minimal API endpoint where I will press continue. The next breakpoint we hit is inside our handle method where we go through the regular flow of creating an entity, adding it to our database context, and then persisting everything after calling save changes. So this completes our normal flow. And now we want to publish this user registered event. So if I keep going after this line, you'll see that we now hit the breakpoint in the user registered handler. And if we take a look at the object that we got, it contains the identifier of our newly created user. So now we could do something like set up their account, maybe create a new tenant for them, or just send them a welcome email. The options are limitless, but I wanted to highlight how easy it is to start building non-trivial messaging applications with Wolverine. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. I'm just a newbie exploring Wolverine, the same as some of you out there. And so far, I like it. Now, what I want to see next is how it integrates with my favorite message transport, which is RabbitMQ, how it deals with the message topology, with the bindings and exchanges and queues. But that's a topic for another video. One more thing I wanted to highlight about Wolverine is that they have amazing documentation it's full of examples. It contains everything you probably need to get started with using it. And they also have a nice community of folks who like using these libraries. So I'm going to drop the link to this in the description of this video where you can learn more and then stay tuned for more videos about Wolverine where we're going to explore some advanced topics. What we covered so far works only in memory. So it's fairly limited for a serious production system. But if you want to learn how to use RabbitMQ to build a messaging application, go ahead and watch this video next. Let me know in the comments what you think about Wolverine. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.